Hello and welcome to the Jumbo Fish's All-In Show. It's a Wednesday night. The place is packed, and here we are at the Sheridan Four Points by Sheridan. And uh, good to see everyone. Coach, we must have beaten Notre Dame or something like that. What do you think? A huge win for Florida State, for Florida State football, and for our fans all over the country, including our group here tonight at the Sheridan. That was a great win, Coach. It really was. I mean, like I say, two brand-name teams, two marquee teams, two top-five teams. And, uh, you know, you have to learn to play in those big games, getting those big wins, and our kids continue to do that. And I'm uh, very proud of them. But, you know, as a, if you're a college football fan, that was a heck of a football game. They I came mean, just in, to yeah. watch as a fan. And, <laughs> I mean, and, uh, you know, somebody said it's the most watched game I think there were 12 million viewers. Yeah, since, 12. I don't know. You, you probably know yeah. all the stats. Boy, they said it was a pretty – that's good for us. That's an NFL kind of number, Coach, watching uh, a college right? football game on a Saturday night. Florida State versus Notre Dame, 12.03 million fans. That's a uh, quick number. It's a pretty good number to me. And y'all were here. Y'all were the game too, weren't you? I, I, everybody was here. Yeah. And I want to say a special thanks to that crowd. That was, I'm gonna tell you, I, I don't ever remember walking out to warm-ups and having the stands full. I mean, when our kids were warming up, it created the atmosphere, the environment, the whole night, and just stayed with the team the whole time, pushed us through. I mean, there was a lot of help from those fans, no doubt. And, and Coach, after the game, I saw a number, almost the entire team, went over to the student section. The students stayed there the entire ball game. <laughs> students are here tonight. Raise your hands and cheer the nose on it. Did you shake hands with the players? Players came over and shook hands and high five. I thought that was great. It I was. had my field glasses well, on. They appreciate, they appreciate the support. There's no doubt about it. And that makes it special to play in Doe Campbell Stadium and those kind of games. 7-0, and o, Coach. Yes, uh, sir. Getting a, a little open date. It's not really an open date. We just don't play. It's a partial Thursday. date. It's a partial <laughs> date. And then we play a week from tomorrow in Louisville, Kentucky against the uh, Louisville Cardinals. Uh, it's a call-in show. And we're ready for some phone calls. one 877 is how you connect. It's a uh, If you live locally and you're watching, on ABC 27, you have to dial that long distance. It's not long distance, no cost. one 877 You can tweet uh, hashtag Jimbo or press the Ask the Coach button. If you're here in the audience, if the uh, Sheridan, the microphone is right here, we invite you to come forward, grab the microphone, and face to face with Jimbo here, a little mano a mano, you know, or uh, and, and hey, ask you know, your question. Or womano to mano. Uh, we, we create our own language here tonight. That's why you watch. And listen to the uh, Jimbo Fisher call and show. Uh, are you ready for some calls? Let's go, buddy. Okay, Mike is in Jacksonville. Mike, yeah. you're on the air first. Go ahead. Touchdown, Florida State. <laughs> hey, gentlemen, how you doing? Good, Mike. How you, uh, buddy? I'm going to skip the uh, stat tonight. <laughs> and let me just say this on the stat, Coach, when your comments about uh, we being family, how this was a family uh, team. And I felt like that up in the stands the other night. I feel I felt like that back in the choke and the doke, how we were such a part of there. I, I, I agree with you. I feel like a family, all of us, the team, the fans. And then my question, coach, I'm gonna I'm gonna get into it. Uh, uh, we practiced Cameron Irving as uh, a re, uh, center. Yes. Uh, I know, and I'm just curious: is this, is it possible that we might get to see him uh, maybe against Louisville? Maybe at the center position. Uh, I, most likely not. I mean, unless there's, unless we need to move him in there for an injury or something like that. But uh, we feel Ryan's getting, he's making a lot of progress, doing some really good things in there. And uh, you know, that you move that left tackle, you move, you move a guy in there, but you're also removing a left tackle who's a pretty important part of uh, what goes on up front too. So. We, we've worked it so far, so we'll, st we'll kind of stay with what we got. But he is capable of going in there and being a very good player, and we feel very comfortable with the other guys we'd put in the game. So we, we've got some depth, probably more so than we've had definitely since I've been here. Okay, Mike, uh, first caller. <coughs> Second is Bill from Tampa. Go ahead, Bill. You're on the air with Bill, Jimbo. You're on the air. Uh, good evening, uh, Coach and Gene. Congratulations on a great win uh, Saturday night against Notre Dame. Uh, two questions for you. At the start, very start of the season, Rashad Green among the wide receivers was the primary playmaker. And as the season has gone along, Rashad's still making plays, but notably Saturday night, other receivers making a lot of big plays as well. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the progress of the receivers in that are they <coughs> learning what they need to do better in the game and how much of that maybe is a trust by the quarterback in those receivers? And secondly, on that controversial play, uh, I found it interesting that you reminded the re uh, referees to be on the lookout for that after Robinson's one touchdown. Uh, is that a particular play that can go unnoticed by referees, or is it just a fine line, uh, whether they call it or not? No, it, it can go unnoticed because you get a bunch set, or you know, eyes can go anywhere, and it's how. And then sometimes they'll catch parts of it and glimpses of it. And you, as official, you don't want to call something you definitely don't see, <clears throat> and so you have to know. 
situations down in distances, certain formations that those types of plays are run. So you're more aware of those plays. And, and uh, I think that's what happened in the game. And we, we did alert them to, to the, from the first half. And luckily they saw it, you know, when they ran it during the second half. But, you know, our young wide receivers, it is a lot of development by Bobo Wilson first, who really came on and emerged as that second guy. And now Travis Rudolph and you still Ermin Lane and you still got Christian Green and Kermit and those guys. But, you know, the other night what you saw is, you know, they were bracketing Nick a lot. People, they had a guy outside of Nick. They always had to go over the top of him because he had had such a great game the game before. And, and if you like I say, you got Rashad Green, you got Nick O'Leary, I would try to take one of them away too. I mean, they tried to take Rashad. We move him around. And, but a tight end's harder to move that way. And if you notice, every time Nick went in motion, they always had a linebacker with great leverage on the outside and they had a guy inside. So they tried to bracket him. Well, they're forcing you to go to other places with the ball. And our offense is actually based on that. There's not a force. We don't force the ball to anybody. We read coverage. We read the one-on-ones. We read where the bracket, you know, the bracket coverages are. And we like our matchups. We go to it. And that's when our offense really clicks. Just like it did a year ago and so is when you don't mind. Okay, he's got the one-on-one. Good. We'll throw it over here. He's got the one-on-one. We throw it over here. And that, the emergence of these guys, that allows Jameis to play so free. and and that Because he knows where to go. But sometimes if they're not ready to get open, or just far enough along in their development as a player, there's nothing wrong with that because it takes all guys all different times to develop as a player. You just don't immediately walk in, I know the plays, and all of a sudden do it right. And uh, now they're lining up in the right you know, alignments, they're writing, getting the right splits, they're running the right routes, but more importantly, they're running in with the right technique. So it's allowing them to get open, and now their confidence is growing, and we're growing as a, as a team. But uh, those young wide receivers' development has been huge. Okay, Bill, here's your answer. Thanks for your call from uh, Tampa. The great question. The State Capitol, historic sites, great nightlife, outstanding restaurants, and relaxing hotels to discover all that the Tallahassee area offers. Join us online at visittallahassee.com. That's visittallahassee.com and plan your escape today. Soon you'll be saying, I heart tally too. The Jimbo Fisher Call-In Show presented by Naval and Infinity live from the Four Points by Sheridan. We'll continue after these messages.